Hello, this video is on functions. Specifically, it's the first of two videos on cubic models, as shown here in the syllabus. A mathematical model is a simplified description of a real-world system using mathematical concepts. The process of developing a model is called modelling. For example, the shape of part of a roller coaster ride can be modelled by a cubic function. A cubic model has the general form f of x is equal to ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, where a, b, c and d are constants, called coefficients. Cubic models are frequently used to describe situations where one quantity, the dependent variable, has an inflection point relative to another quantity, the independent variable. The graph of a cubic model can have either a zero or two turning points, and the key features of the graph are its y-intercept, its x-intercept or intercepts, its inflection points, and its maximum or minimum points. This cubic model has no maximum or minimum points, whilst this one has one maximum and one minimum point. Note also that this cubic model has three x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are also called the roots, or the zeros. In the example shown here, the population of ferrets in a sanctuary is modelled by the cubic function given. The graph has a y-intercept at the point 0, 21. So at the start, there are 21 ferrets in the sanctuary. As time cannot be negative, there is no x-intercept. The graph has a maximum point at the point shown. So during the first two years, the ferret population peaked at 50. The graph also has a minimum point, showing that over the next three years, the ferret population dropped to 34. After that, the graph, and hence the ferret population, continues to rise. So the domain of P is T is greater than or equal to zero. And the range of P is P of T is greater than or equal to 21. In this question, we're asked to sketch the graph of the cubic function given and on our sketch to label the coordinates of the axes intercepts and any maximum or minimum points. If we start by finding the y-intercept, and we can do this by replacing x with 0, given a value of negative 12. Alternatively, we can perform this task on the calculator. From the main menu, select graph, pressing the x variable button, raising that to the power of 3, and then a the right cursor to come down, then taking away 7, pressing the X button again, and then the squared button, plus 4, pressing the X button one more time, and then subtracting 12. Pressing Execute to enter the equation, and then F6 to draw the graph of the function. As the graph is only partially visible, we need to adjust the window. Pressing F3 to access view window, scrolling down, and setting y min to negative 50, pressing execute, pressing y max, setting y max, sorry, to 50, and y scale to 10. Pressing execute and pressing F6 to draw the graph of the function again. To find the y intercept on the calculator, press F5, G solve, and then F4 for y-intercept. So as before, the y-intercept has coordinates 0, comma, negative 12. At this point, we can make a neat sketch of the graph and label the y-intercept. To find the coordinates of the x-intercept, press F5 for G-solve and then F1 for root, giving the results shown correct to three significant figures. 
and then add in the coordinates of the x-intercept to the sketch. To find the coordinates of the maximum point, press F5, G solve, and then F2, maximum, given the results shown, and then add in them to the sketch. Lastly, to find the coordinates of the minimum point, press F5, G solve, and F3, minimum. Given the coordinates shown, and again adding them to the sketch. In part A of this question, we're asked to find the number of bacteria present when the drug is first introduced. Beginning by drawing the graph of the function, so into Y1, I'm going to type 1200 plus 17 and I'm going to press the X variable button to represent T and then the square button and then take away and then pressing the X button again and then raising that to the power of 3 pressing execute to enter the equation pressing shift and then F3 to access view window setting X min to 0 and X max to 20 as that's the domain of the function given, and with a scale of, say, 5. Scrolling down and setting a Y min to 0, and a Y max to, let's say, 2000, and a Y scale of, perhaps, 400. Press an execute, and then press an F6 to draw the graph of the function. It's important to make a sketch of the graph. To find the y-intercept, press F5, G solve, and then F4, y-intercept, given the coordinates shown. So the number of bacteria present when the drug is first introduced is 1,200. In part B, to find the number of bacteria present after 5 minutes, we need to find P of 5. On the calculator, this is a y-calculation. Pressing F5, G solve, and then F6 to get to the next page of tabs, and F1 for a Y calculation. Entering the value of T or X equal to 5, and pressing execute. Given P equals 1,500, so the number of bacteria present after 5 minutes is 1,500. In part C, to find at what time there are a thousand bacteria present, we need to solve the equation P of T equals a thousand. On the calculator, this is an X calculation. Pressing F5, G solve, F6 to get to the next page of tabs, and F2 for an X calculation. Entering the value of P or Y as a thousand, and pressing execute. Given T equals 17.6, correct to three significant figures. So there are a thousand bacteria present after 17.6 minutes. In part D, to find the maximum number of bacteria and the time at which this occurs, we need to find the coordinates of the maximum points. Pressing F5, G solve, and F2, maximum given the results shown. So the maximum number of bacteria is 1930 and it occurs after 11.3 minutes, correct to three significant figures. In part E, to find at what time there are no bacteria remaining, we need to solve the equation P of T equals zero. So we need to find the root of the zero of the equation. Pressing F5, G solve and F1 for the root, giving T equals 20. So there are no bacteria remaining after 20 minutes.